Hello everyone, and today I have another video for you all. This time, there's a character that I've been wanting to play for some time now. Uh, one of the more difficult characters in my opinion, and I, his name is Yul. And I will never not say his name by like, not like that by the way, so that's going to happen very, very often. Anyways, this is a hunter that I've been wanting to play for a very long time. He seems like, a, in my opinion, and I feel like I don't see many people play him just because he has a very interesting way to play you need to land majority of his hits to do any damage and if you don't land them you're going to be severely punished for that his autos aren't that bad his autos are just like any other hunter but his attacks or his main abilities are where you're going to cash out majority of your abilities and your damage and so i've been trying to find a build for this guy for quite some time now it seems like i've been having trouble and it just seems like i try to build like a normal hunter or i or i guess a normal auto attack hunter where i go for more attack speed than anything you know attack speed crits things like that and i try to just use my abilities to just either end the kill or just set up a kill little things like that but it seems like from all the trial and error that i've done all the build practicing that i've done I've uh, stumbled upon a build that I've been using quite often and pretty much the only build that I've been using exclusively for him and it pretty much consists of mostly power items and what I mean by that is mostly the items that I use are straight power, straight pen. Uh, I do use a starter item and sometimes I even keep the starter item just because it's uh, it helps. There's some moments if I'll pop a snipe and someone's really low on health and they'll walk away and the blue stone will actually, some, most of the time it actually does get me a kill or even I've had a clip or two while I'll jump on a person they'll have low health and I'll just walk away because blue stone gets me the kill because of that. It's little things like that that I feel like it, that make blue stone, you know, a very, very good item even if it takes up a slot. Especially late game, just because with all the other power that I have left over, it seems like a working thing for me. And another weird thing that I do with him is I build uh, transcendence around the fourth item just because it seems like when I jump straight from boots to and I always build it in the same order so I, I do boots blue stone and then blood forge and then I will do Jotun's wrath and then I'll do what's it called I'll do Titan's Bane right so it really depends but half of the time I'll probably won't do that or I won't do Titan's Bane and then I will do what's it called I'll do transcendence things like that or sometimes I'll get attack speed it really depends on the matter but if you do have a lead I feel like having the extra damage is more better than attack speed any day because your one he did get buffed very very recently so his one does do a lot more damage and what I mean by a lot more I mean it does 20 more early game and that and that may not sound very significant but if you use a stun with your axe and then you switch stance and then you use your bladed arrow which is your first ability with your arrow stance um, it's a lot of damage. That stacks also with bluestone. Remember that. So uh, that will probably add up to an extra 60 or more damage if you hit, uh, you know, if you hit it right, and maybe your abilities are leveled up correctly. As you see in the bottom right corner, I level up my my. Well, it actually really depends. If you're if you're very very accurate with your snipes, then always always max out your snipe first because it does the most damage definitely, and especially late game with items like transcendence and things like that, it will get you many many kills because late game once you have a full build, full stacks and everything like that, a good snipe will do around seven to eight hundred damage a hit. So that's very very good, especially if someone's you know half health and they're a mage, that's a kill. Like regardless of their health, that will be a kill majority of the time. So do not be afraid of definitely maxing that out, but I will always max out my first ability simply because of things like that. You stun, you switch stance. If you have enough time, you think you're fast enough, you could pop your two and then pop your one again, and it just gives it that extra 50 damage. It may not sound like a lot again, but it, uh, it does help. It gets kills, and sometimes it'll even help another teammate do little things like that. So um, he is a hunter that I feel like is very good if he's used to team up with other players, like set up kills to help him set up kills or even you know help your teammate sorry your teammates even set up kills he just seems very uh utility based I, I mean when i mean utility based i mean the fact that he has a lot of options available to him he has a very very probably a, i think so the most far range poke in the game his he has a stun he has a getaway he has a buff he has a speed buff where he can get in and out of a fight immediately his speed buffs like 40 percent extra speed to him it's very significant his axe stun goes very far Sometimes you could just uh, turn around, throw it, whiff it, and it's a it's a very high chance that you're going to hit the person and probably even get the kill because it does around 250 damage for the hit alone. And again, if you that's maxed out, if you probably use that with the bladed arrow, you know the the arrow stance stuff like that, they're easy kills. And you could set it up like that where you switch stance, you stun them, and then you switch stance again. You go to your your arrow class, you pop your three, and then you pop your one. 
And there you go, you most likely will have a kill majority of situations. That seems to be the wombo combo that I have learned and something that I have stuck with with this guy. And I very, very do much enjoy this hunter. He's one of the few gods that I play in Smite that it seems like when you do a good play or when you do a good kill, it's deserved because you did something and it just seems like you definitely outplayed them because you're not relying on the fact that you have an ult. You have this big, massive power surge of an ability that's waiting to be used. It seems like you have to rely on autos, you have to rely on your abilities, you have to make sure that you're hitting your stuff. So it's kind of a, a welcome pace change. Sort of like playing Hell, but Hell is just extremely bursty. I like this guy just because you can do things like this. You know, you can set up a good kill and he does, he has an extremely high damage output, again, if built with the right setup. So one of the funnest hunters in the game, one of the funnest gods in the game, one of the most difficult. I highly suggest that if you want a challenge in Smite to definitely learn how to play this guy because he, his snipe will take a long time to get used to, but once you get used to the range and knowing where to hit and what you can do with it, it's uh, it's it's amazing. And and like in, in this clip, for example, it's just an example of how good the snipe is. But I hope you guys enjoyed the little video for today and take care.